Today we are going to be talking about one of the most important experiments in the history of particle and nuclear physics, namely Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment. This experiment was designed to probe the very fundamental nature of the atom and probe the structure of it. So right before this experiment, towards the late 19th century, the um, existence of the electron was discovered by a British scientist named J.J. Thompson, and he proposed a new model of the atom, which became known as the plum pudding model of the atom. Let's have a look. In order to illustrate the structure of the atom, I'm going to be using the brilliant simulations from Fed Colorado. Um, please find them in a link in the description of this video and have a play yourselves. They're absolutely fantastic. Now, this is the plum pudding model of the atom. If you're in the USA, you may have heard of this as being referred to as the chocolate chip cookie of uh, model of, of the atom. J.J. Thompson proposed this shortly after the discovery of the electron. We needed a way to make the atom electrically neutral. In this model, the uh, electrons are represented by these bluish dots over here, and they're located within a sea of positive charge, with the atom being electrically neutral. The amount of positive charge equals the total amount of negative charge. This means that if I was to fire off some alpha particles, that then they should be going straight through. The reason for that is because there's going to be an equal amount of force pulling one way um, and an equal amount of force pulling the other way from the positive and negative charges. So Rutherford decided to test the plum pudding model of the atom. By doing so, he chose to fire off alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. What he had on the other side was a fluorescent screen, which was actually attached to a microscope, and he was able to detect how many particles were arriving at a given angle away from the gold foil. This was his setup. Essentially, he would fire off particles by using an alpha particle radiation source straight at the gold foil, and if J.J. Thompson's model was correct, all of the alpha particles should be passing straight through. What Rutherford did was essentially do this experiment by moving the detector at an angle theta. Let's see what did Rutherford actually discover. This was a monumental result, which was really, really shocking as well. First off, when he fired off the particles, he noticed something absolutely remarkable. Let's fire off some alpha particles. And what Rutherford discovered was that even though most of the particles went straight through, about one in every 2,000 particles was scattered. And very few of those particles, about one in about 10,000 or so, were deflected through some very, very large angles of more than 90 degrees. He was completely shocked by those results. It was as if there was something very, very powerful which was making some of those particles move at a very, very large angle. Now, those observations mean that we can draw certain conclusions. First off, because most of the particles went straight through the thin gold foil without scattering, this must mean that most of the nucleus must be empty space. Additionally, because very few of the particles, about one in 10,000 or so, were scattered at a large angle, this means that a small but a positive nucleus exists. And a large scattering, a scattering of a large angle, occurs whenever an alpha particle comes close to the nucleus. And in fact, this is where most of the mass and additionally the positive charge will have to be concentrated. Remember, alpha particles are positive, so they're going to repel if they're near the positive nucleus. Okay, guys, now let's apply what we have learned so far to a real past paper question. 
So this is an OCR Physics A question from June 2011. Uh, however, the physics is applicable to all exam boards. And just the usual disclaimer that these are not official solutions, just my solutions. And please visit the exam board's uh, official website for the official mark schemes. Okay, well, let's have a look. We have an experiment which is used to carry out to determine the nature of the atoms. Alpha particles were fired at thin metal foils. Describe how the alpha particle scattering experiments provide evidence for the existence, charge, and size of the nucleus. In your answer, make, uh, make clear how your conclusions link with your observations. And this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and attempt the question. Okay guys, so let's have a look at my solution. Now first off, please make sure that we fully answer the question and we have linked our conclusions with our observations. Most of the alpha particles go straight through the gold foil and this is an example of an observation that's why I'm going to be highlighting this in green. Of course, in the real exam, you don't have to highlight this. However, I just want to make, um, make it absolutely clear which bit of the answer is observation, which bit of the answer is a conclusion. Therefore, most of the atom is, in fact, empty space. And this here is an example of a conclusion, like so. Our next observation is that a very small number of the particles are scattered by large angles, meaning more than 90 degrees. And this, once again, is an experimental observation, so I'm just going to be highlighting this in green. And the conclusion that we can make from this experimental result is that the nucleus has to exist, and it has to be small, and it has to be positive as well. Additionally, Rutherford made one more conclusion, and that is that the nucleus has a size of approximately 10 to the power of minus 14 meters. Now, how exactly did Rutherford get that number? Stay tuned for our next video. Okay, guys, so hopefully Rutherford's uh, alpha particle scattering experiment makes sense now. If there are any questions, do let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.